And welcome back to America Right Now. The nation is getting a new attorney general, but will he continue the Hunter Biden investigation aggressively, or will he be an activist attorney general like Eric Holder? And uh, we also have a trial date for former President Trump. So let's discuss this with our own Saturday legal team. Thane Rosenbaum is a distinguished university professor at Toro Law School. And John Malcolm is the vice president at the Institute for Constitutional Government and a senior, senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. And one week, I will actually get your title out without screwing it up, John. Uh, professor, before uh, we talk about impeachment and Merrick Garland, uh, Andrew Cuomo made some headlines this week. He said that if he doesn't get his bailout, He's going to sue the federal government. Now, first of all, nobody told him to keep his state shut down for a year. But is that possible? And on what grounds would he actually do such a thing? Well, remember, you know, the state has uh, obligations to the federal government and the federal government has reciprocal obligations to the state. So to the extent to which there are new policies that are being implemented by the Biden administration that would prejudice the fiscal uh, plan, of the state of New York in federal court, there's no question that the governor can bring a lawsuit against the federal government. Uh, These things don't necessarily, he won't necessarily prevail, but his argument is to say, uh, you know, New York has taken a bigger hit than other states, and there are taxes now against wealthy New Yorkers that are forcing them to leave, and that there's gonna be a big deficit, and Mm -hmm. we're insisting that the government assists the state of New York to get through this. Yeah. Remember, New York, the federal government didn't want to rescue New York City in the 1970s. So we've seen this before. Yeah, yeah, of course, a lot of his fiscal problems were the product of his own doing and predate COVID. Uh, John, uh, we now know that the articles of impeachment will be delivered this coming week to the Senate. Uh, the president has retained counsel and the trial is set to start February 8th. But it doesn't look like they're going to get 66 votes here. Do you anticipate that this is ultimately going to turn into a censure vote? And how would that happen? Well, they need to get 67. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know whether they'll get 67 or not. If Mitch McConnell decides to vote to convict, that would change the calculus. But if not, I'm, I'm quite sure that many, many Republicans would uh, agree to a resolution of censure of some kind, uh, which is what they did for Bill Clinton. And, you know, that'll be worth for posterity, whatever people think it's worth. All right. Uh, Thane, uh, FBI Director Chris Wray is staying on in the Biden administration. I don't think there's any big surprise there. We're getting a new attorney general, uh, Merrick Garland. He is uh, slated to be Biden's AG, and he's going to inherit that Hunter Biden investigation. You know, Bill Barr, it seemed to me, at least attempted to be independent. It's a very tough job. You're, you're, you know, you're being pulled in multiple directions. But more often than not in history, it doesn't happen. You do have, you know, more activist AGs. Should should we expect a full investigation into these allegations of self-dealing and abuses of power against the president uh, or his son? Or, or is this just all going to go away, do you think? Tom, Merrick Garland has already said that his loyalty will not be to the president, but will be to the Constitution. And you're quite right. It's a tough job. Uh, Attorney General sits as a cabinet officer in the president's cabinet. He or she is also interested in advancing the policy goals of the president, but he's he or she is also, in this case, Garland, he is the chief investigator and prosecutor uh, for the United States. And we've had examples of activist AGs, uh, but we've also had, you know, active uh, AGs that have been immensely loyal to the president. The best example of that is Bobby Kennedy, right, who was the younger brother of John Kennedy, Uh, who served also, oddly enough, as a senior advisor in the White House. Uh, Can we imagine Bobby Kennedy uh, bringing a lawsuit prosecution against his brother? Uh, If Garland can be taken at his word, uh, his loyalty will be to the rule of law. And if there's anything uh, in the Biden uh, relationship, financial relationship with China, uh, he'll take that prosecution to the next level. John, uh, we've been talking a lot about big tech uh, and I'm, I'm skeptical that he's going to aggressively go after big tech because of the role, frankly, that they played in helping get Biden elected. But from, from what we know of his time on the bench about his positions on antitrust law and other relevant issues, uh, could he end up uh, being somebody who, who wants to go uh, go after, after big tech? Uh, what do you see in his past that could give us a window into how he may handle that issue? 
I don't know on that particular issue. I mean, obviously, there are antitrust lawsuits that are going on now, and both sides of Congress are talking about amending or doing away with Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. I mean, look, Merrick Garland not only has been a judge, he has a lot of experience at the Department of Justice. He was a line prosecutor. He was in the criminal division, the deputy's office, and at one point worked as a counselor to the attorney general. There will be a lot of changing priorities, particularly in the area of civil rights. Certain cases that are pending before the Supreme Court, I'm sure the administration will now change positions. And it's not just the Hunter Biden investigation that I'm looking at, uh, but also what he does with John Durham and his ongoing investigation into the origins of the so-called Russian collusion probe. Mm -hmm. uh, so Merrick Garland, very well qualified, man of really great integrity, but there are going to be political forces uh, and winds at his back, and we'll have to see how he handles them. All right, Professor Thane Rosenbaum and John Malcolm, always a pleasure. Appreciate your insights. Thank you, Tom. Good to see you. Up next, a long, hard look at President Biden's economic agenda. Stay tuned.